They tried calling Trump uh, racist and it, it didn't work, but it did get clicks. They then called him the most racist and it didn't work, but it did get them clicks. And they tr- then they tried saying he's almost as bad as Hitler got clicks, but they got to keep escalating it. So eventually it got to the point where they said he is Hitler, then he's worse than Hitler. Now he wants to have generals that are just like Hitler. But here's my favorite. The Atlantic wrote this only, uh, I think this was last week. What is this, October 18th? Yeah. Trump is speaking like Hitler, Stalin, and Mussolini. Ah, yes, a that would make him a fascist communazi. If, you, if they want to combine all of those yeah. uh, dictators, he's a fascist communazi. I don't know how those things come together, but they're basically saying he is speaking like a dictator. We get it. Now, Hitler didn't work. So they're like, what if we add Stalin and Mussolini to that as well? I mean, maybe that scares people. I like including him. That's good. Yeah. Maybe yeah. Just like a fruit punch of dictators that Trump could be like. Yeah. Not just that, Hitler. Not just Hitler. You know, because as, as conservatives come out and said, you know, the communists were bad, too. They killed tens of millions, hundred million plus people. They were like, OK, we'll just put Hitler and a communist yeah. and then include a, fa- a, a what fascist. What did you say? Or was this just a Grab your mic, Ian. So thanks, man. Uh, thanks for reminding me, sir. You're not wearing what, your headphones. What did he? That's a good point. I haven't been wearing them lately. What, what did he say that? That they think he sounds like Hitler, Mussolini. Now, you know, Hitler did kind of sound like Mussolini. Mussolini was his idol. He idolized the guy and he kind of, you know, garnered the Nazi fascist regime after Mussolini's re- regime. He kind of based it off of it. But Stalin, I mean, dictator was speaks like dictator, maybe. What was Trump? I mean, what the? I, I, I don't think that it matters. It's just a, I don't, it doesn't, it, it's something? not about what Trump said. Like I said, it doesn't matter what Trump does. This isn't about Trump and it's not about the election. This is about preparing the landscape so that, so that way they can justify saying he's so bad we can't allow him to take office. I think uh, civil, war. civil war. I mean, look, there, there was I'm jumping there- right to 11, but let me tell you why real quick, because I don't want to just leave it there. It's because uh, right now Democrats are, are leading in early voting, but Republicans have made massive gains. Republicans are expected to win on Election Day. This means that Democrats and Republicans have two different elections at the same time. The idea that you can have a day of election, Republicans are like on election day, we all go vote. And Democrats are like, we can collect votes throughout the month. Those are two completely different systems operating in parallel at different times. And then we compare the numbers and see which side got more. Republicans recently started participating in absentee and mail-in voting more so. And so they have massive gains now. So right now what they're saying is because Republicans are closing the gap in absentee and mail-in, it's expected that Republicans are going to win based on the data we already have from the Democrat version of what an election is. However, if there's still only 5 million Republican voters, I mean, a hypothetical number, and 2.5 million vote early, 2.5 million will vote on day of. So if we're seeing Republicans embrace mail-in and early voting now, it doesn't necessarily mean there will be more votes on election day. But the reason why I said civil war is I think it's important people actually consider the, when what I see with uh, uh, what what you're saying, Phil, how they're laying out the framework for what comes. It's not about the election. It's about what comes yeah. after. We've talked about in the past that when Trump tries to deport all of these illegal immigrants, they're going to start running photos of buses, of trains, of the military operation, of police. And they're going to juxtapose them with World War II and Holocaust photos and say, see, we told you mm-hmm. they're going to use all of this to prime and prep the people who live in Democrat weirdo world who believe these things, despite them being unsourced. It's nonsense. And then you have the fact that I think it's fair to say Republicans come out and they go, election day is November 5th and the Constitution prescribes a single day for voting. And Democrats go, we don't care. We're going to vote all month and collect ballots and then turn them in nine days afterwards so you can count them. And then 13 days after the election, determine who won. Those are two completely different systems. Republicans tolerate the Democrats version of events and then consider their outside of the rules numbers. There's the there's this is in. This is also in conjunction with, uh, I believe it was um, a DOD Directive 5240.01, which is allowing the intelligence organization or intelligence apparatus to work in conjunction with law enforcement. Um, one of the key points, it says, uh, directives outline, the directive outlines policies for intelligence components support to law enforcement agencies, including potential use of lethal force. Now, this is inside the United States, right? These, these are things that are pre- supposed to be prohibited by the Constitution. CIA is not supposed to operate in the U.S. But um, this, the Directive 5240.01 um, It's an internal Department of Defense policy document that details procedures for DOD intelligence components assistance to U.S. law enforcement. Um, There's been the directive has undergone revisions with some of the most 
recent version published on September 27, 2024. Rumors have circulated about a reissue directive allegedly targeting individuals who raise concerns about U.S. government activities. That's Elon Musk. That's Joe Rogan. That's us here. That is... Not me. You think so? <laughs> I'm kidding. Um, but like, but, people but that the, raise the point, concerns about government activities. Yes, that's the, the yes. quote. Uh, yeah, the 2016 version that's of the, the DoD. The point of the United States the, the, it is the, a concern against. I, I'm activity. I'm aware. Let me go through this. The, six, the 2016 version of the DoD Manual 5240.01, published on August 8, 2016, focuses on intelligence oversight, ensuring independent monitoring of intelligence activities within the DoD. The 2020 update to the 20, to the 2007 issuance of the directive and the 2016 manual are mentioned as points of comparison with some speculating about a language about language differences and potential implications the point is they've authorized the DOD and and intelligence apparatus that would be CIA working in conjunction with law enforcement that's there that's to target American citizens which is it's supposed to be off limits but this in conjunction with the stuff that that they're saying um, that Kamala Harris has said today the at the the narrative that's being spun, I I don't think that it's far fetched to say that they're going to do something should Trump win to prevent him from taking office. And honestly, like I said, everybody that's in the podcasting space, everyone that's a dissenting voice, you'll we'll all have targets on our back too. Well, the entire United you know? States is a dissenting voice against government. That's not true at all. That's it's, the whole that, purpose that, is it's a revolution against. I understand against that. the crown. You're going to start yeah. this again. We are I'm talking all, about the United revo- States government. We are in constant you're, revolution. You're, Our government is a constant revolution. You're derailing People a in serious and conversation. They can target anybody, you're dude. Derailing you understand a what that means? Conversation. Anyone Ian, that complains Ian, about the government. This is not a derailment. To, the the, the Tim, point. I was going to call you the Tim. Point I'm is, so used to it. The point is, this is specifically going to be targeting people that don't that don't support the general narrative. They're not going to target MSNBC. Well, you're assuming They're that, not but gonna, you're probably right. But it's still they could. They're not going to target MSNBC. They're not going to target people in the administration. They're not going to target NBC. They're not going to target people that are normal, that are normies that aren't involved in in political action or in in, in even even in criticizing the federal government. They're going to target people that have that have been critical of the government. People like I said, like Joe Rogan, Elon Musk, Glenn Beck, uh, Tucker Carlson. Uh, obviously, they they would target us. People that are influential. You know, those are the people that they would be after. And they're going, this is, this is the, the point of this stuff is to prepare the landscape. So they say, Donald Trump is the big Hitler. Donald Trump is super Hitler. And then after that, once, if they go ahead and throw him in jail, which I totally believe they will do if, if Kamala Harris wins. And if not, I think that they will try to throw him in jail and say that he didn't win the election, or they'll say that he's some kind of threat or something like that. Um, and I don't have any kind of like evidence or anything, but that's just my gut feeling. But there's no, there's, I, I mean, wh- why wouldn't they? They've lied about people. They threw a boatload of people in jail after January 6th. Steve Bannon's still in jail right now. They would, they, they put Roger Stone in jail. They're trying to put Trump in jail using the, 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 uh, any means they have. Why wouldn't they try to, to toss people in Biden jail? Biden yesterday said we need to put him yeah. away or something. Lock need, him up. Lock him up politically, which is what? A political prison? No, 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 no. He said we need to lock him up. The whole crowd starts clapping and cheering, and then he goes, politically lock him which up. Which is still like a political imprisonment, still an imprisonment. Like they locked up <laughs> a lot of people for political That's reasons. A good point. They've, they've got. They've politically put, lock him up. That's even worse, actually. Yeah. yeah. They've put a lot of people in prison, and I don't see any reason for them to stop, especially if Kamala Harris wins. They'll feel like they have a mandate. Don't you feel like some of this labeling is losing its power, though, like everyone being literally Hitler all the time? It's it's not about getting people to believe it. It's about creating a narrative that justifies action. doesn't matter because the the people that are Kamala Harris supporters, people that are that are Democrat supporters, they're already they already believe this. They'll eat it up. Yeah, yeah they're going to eat it up. So what they're doing isn't trying to convince people. Like I said, this isn't about getting votes. This isn't about convi- commit. Uh, convincing the the very very narrow margin or the very few people that are undecided this is about creating a narrative that will justify actions that are that are illegal justify actions that you know would go contrary to the vote should donald trump win it's not it's about preparing the landscape for action it's not about convincing anyone of anything 
Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. I mean, I was at January 6th all day, and uh, you know, they talk about the insurrectionists, the white supremacists that were there. And uh, I, I, I thought that the news coverage of that was, uh, was shocking compared to my on-the-ground perspective of what I saw on January 6th. And uh, yeah, I'm happy I didn't walk in that building. Yeah. I'll say that, because it, uh, it was easy. You could have walked right in. It seemed like they were just letting people in. Yeah, I'm happy that I was as posting from New Hampshire. Thanks for checking out this clip from TimCast IRL. Make sure to watch the show live Monday through Friday at 8 p.m. Subscribe to this channel, and we will see you all there.